Hey guys, and welcome to an unboxing video. I will be unboxing the new-ish Wacom Mobile Studio Pro number two. Uh, and this is replacing an old device that I've had also by Wacom, which was a Cintiq Companion. Uh, this is about 12 years old, um, so it's ran really well, but it's just time for an upgrade. One of the features which I love about the new device is the stand and just the general build quality. It feels a lot nicer, so let's have a look. When I purchased this from Wacom Australia, uh, it took a couple of days to be dispatched, but it arrived the same day that they actually shipped it out. So it was a pretty quick delivery. I was really happy with that. So the back of the box talking about all the specs and then the front page talks about where the charging port is, which is the middle type C port. This is the new Pro Pen 2 they are calling it. It feels really really similar. It's very very lightweight, similar size. Um, yeah, but it's meant to be better sensitivity. Here's the device itself. It looks so so much thinner and it's a lot more lightweight which is going to make it easier for me to carry around. We've got the stand, the uh, cylindrical like case to hold your pen and it has your pen nibs in there as well in the top. The little clip is a holder for your pen that you can attach to the side of the tablet and then of course you've got your charging brick, uh, the little rings that you can put on your pen and uh, like cleaning fabric and then multi international chargers to charge it up with. So we're going to look at uh, getting this all set up and plugged in and turn it on for the first time, very exciting. So the specs I got for this device is an i7 processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD built in. So that's a pretty, pretty hefty piece of work that they fit in a really, really slim design size. Um, and it's gonna be a huge upgrade for me. Alrighty, so we've got him all set up. Um, here you can see the three charging ports on the side and just how thin it is. And this is so much more lightweight. Uh, it's definitely heavier than an iPad, but with the specs that you're running, you know, I would expect such as much. Um, and then we've got the stand here, which is just like, it's actual metal where the other one, it was a plastic with just like rubber hinges and it always used to flip down and it wasn't that great. So they really fixed this. I'll see if I can brighten this a little bit. So you just clip it up in the middle, put it down, that's clipped on and we'll get them turned on. I'll plug it in as well. Alrighty, uh, the fingerprint sensor is new. Okay, so we have our tablet set up. I've got all my programs loaded in here. Um, it's all ready to go. Now I'm gonna talk about how I personally set up the function buttons on the side here for the digital drawing that I do. So in your Wacom menu, you're gonna have your touch settings here. So with your function buttons, this is how I personally have it set up. So the top one here, uh, is set to a keystroke and the letter I. So a keystroke modifier um, means just a button that is on your keyboard. So you can basically have it set to anything that you want. And the reason I use this is in Photoshop, um, which is primarily what I use, the keystroke I will select your color picker tool, which means that if I want to select this gray over here, I hold down my eye button, it'll select the gray, and then when I'm drawing, it's gonna be that color. Um, pretty simple. And I use that quite a lot to um, get the kind of painterly look that I normally get with my painting, which I can show you in a little bit. The next button I have is Shift. Uh, Shift is used for a couple of reasons in Photoshop. Uh, a couple of things that it does is, so if you do 
a smudge over here and you want to connect the dots, you hold down shift and touch somewhere else and it will do a line across there, if you can see that. Um, shift can also, we'll go over to the white here. If you hold down shift and just move sideways or up, it'll do a perfectly like horizontal line. So it's perfectly straight. Uh, I might also use shift if I'm selecting multiple layers. Say I've got, you know, five layers here and I want to just select all of them. You select the top one, you hold down shift and you select the bottom one and that will select all of the ones in between, uh, which you can also do in like your files and stuff in Windows. That's a pretty regular tool. Okay, so next we have an undo button. That's so it's set to Control-Z, uh, pretty self-explanatory. I do something, I stuff up, I press the undo button. It'll go back one step. The next modifier uh, is Control. Control in Photoshop is mostly used when I am using the free transform tool. It's probably the ratchet here. Say we select this and we want to make it larger. I'll go to free transform and I can change the size of it. No problem. But if I'm holding the control button down, it puts it into like a perspective warp mode. So you can make like one end look larger. Um, this is more prominent in like circles, wheels, if you're trying to put a wheel on something. If I can do a basic circle. Make it a bit rounder. So say that's a wheel, right, and then we want to put it on a car, maybe the car's facing more towards you, so then you might have it like this, and then it's going to look like it's more on its side. Pretty simple. That's normally what I would use the control button for. Control can also select multiple items, but it just selects the ones that you've touched while you're holding control. So if I want to select the top layer and the very bottom layer, but leave the middle one out, you can do that by holding select. The next one I have is Alt. The last two buttons here I don't use super often, but what Alt can sometimes be used for is, say you're photoshopping a face and it's got like some pimples or something like that. Um, there's a tool called the uh, Clone Stamp, which will basically copy an area and stamp it across. So if we do this on a large scale, say I copy eyebrows and I draw over here, I'm gonna get some eyebrows. I've only got the bottom layer, but uh, it basically just copies it over. So if there is some blemishes on a photo, you'll hold Alt on a bit of skin near it that's a little bit clearer, and then you can just cover it up. Um, yeah. Not a thing that I use super often with actual um, painting but it is a tool that Photoshop has. Um, I think there's a couple of other tools that you need to select an area first so that's where the alt key comes in so it's just handy to have. And the last one that I have is the radial menu. I don't actually use the radial menu but if I press it it brings this little round menu up here um, and I think you can change what these do and you can have them set to different programs um, like it's got save, tab, step backwards, step forwards, capture window, display toggle, brush panel, stuff like that. But that is how um, I generally have my tablet set up for painting and I've been using this for a couple of years now. Um, now I'll go into the, the eye that I use, like so the first button that I use the most. Basically the reason I have this is if I'm doing a gradient, say we want to have some orange at the top of here and I paint that up here, cool. But now I've just got a big orange line. So if I want to actually blend that, I'll hold I and I'll select this color here which is a little bit more gray and then when I put that down, it's a little bit lighter again and I can do that again and again. And what this does is it, it blends it out and it gives you, probably turn this down to about 70. Uh, and it, it gives you a nice gradient of things, but it keeps your colors vibrant and it allows you to still be able to see the brush strokes underneath. And that's where you get that really kind of painterly feel, um, giving it almost like a, like an oil painting vibe or something like that. 
So yeah, I use this a lot when I'm painting. Um, yeah, and that's generally how I will have it set up. So we can jump into sort of a process and I will try to get this Ratchet and Clank painting finished. Oh, and one last thing that I forgot to mention is the pen that I'm holding has two buttons on it. So the top button is your right click like you would on a normal mouse and the button closer to the bottom tip is e the hand tool in Photoshop. So that means that when I'm holding it down I can move my picture around the canvas. So when I'm zoomed in I might move up or down or left or right and that's what you can see I'm doing here. Thank you. 